brings people together like a movie at Christmas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is Sky News in just a moment, the press preview, a first look at what is on the front pages. First though this evening, our top stories and Donald Trump's decision to officially recognise Jerusalem as Israel's capital has been met with international condemnation. It's emerged tonight that Theresa May is preparing to make a fresh Brexit offer on the Irish border by Friday to try and break the deadlock in negotiations. And a man who allegedly planned to bomb his way into Downing Street and then assassinate the Prime Minister has appeared in court. Hello there, you're watching the press preview, a first look at what is on the front pages. In the next half hour, we'll see what's making the headlines with the author and columnist for the new European newspaper, Bonnie Greer, and the journalist and talk radio presenter, Julia hartley Brown. Welcome, good to see both of you. As ever, the front pages first of all, and The Guardian goes with the US President's Middle East decision, leading with the headline, Anger, as Trump declares Jerusalem, Israel's capital. The Telegraph suggests Theresa May is at risk of losing her premiership if an EU exit deal cannot be formalised. The Eye reports on Brexit Secretary David Davis's admission that the Cabinet hasn't formally examined the impact that Brexit will have on the UK's economy. The Metro's lead story is an apparent bar fight inside the House of Commons in which an employee was allegedly hit in the face with a glass. The Times says can cancer patients and people with severe mental illness are going without essential medicines because of shortages that have cost the NHS £180 million in six months. The Daily Mail quotes the Defence Secretary Gavin Williamson as saying he'd prefer British fighters with sympathies to IS to die on the field of battle rather than returning home to potentially carry out further violence. A man has appeared in court, accused of allegedly urging jihadis to attack Prince George. That's the front page of the Mirror. The Financial Times has word of a £3.4 billion bid for the owner of Into, Britain's largest chain of shopping centres. As it often does, the Express reports more bad weather is on the way. Storm Caroline, of course. And the Star has a story about the marriage of TV presenter Ant McPartland. He's a celebrity. Getting... He's a celebrity, <laughs> yes, there we go, exactly. So Bonnie Greer, Julie Hartley Brewer are here. Uh, let's start with The Guardian. One of the few papers that has to be mm. said to be putting the Jerusalem Declaration by Donald Trump on the front pages. Indeed. This is a sort of game changer in a real sense of the word. Uh, generally, what has happened over the last 25 years or so is that the American presidents have said Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, however, uh, we will certify that, but then we enter into a peace process, and America's always been seen as one of the brokers of that, and that's been going on for 25 years. Um, and it is true that that is real, that Jerusalem is, has been recognized by the United States in that way. What the United States has never done is unilaterally certify this as a fait accompli, as a matter of American policy, uh, of course, has opened up literally and figuratively a firestorm because suddenly the United States is outside of the loop of the peace process and becomes, it goes down on one side. Uh, people can argue and say, well, was there ever one anyway? What's really going on? And I mean, that's open to discussion. And but they can argue that de facto Jerusalem is the capital. Well, it, well, is it, just it's where the government is. It, it, it is where the government is. But to say that it is the eternal capital of Israel puts it into another category, which then again causes the other side, the Palestinians, to argue this, to go into an existential argument, which is there is no end to this argument. And the president is, well, Trump. He is the presidency. Trump is now. Wait, you're not waking up to this dream. I know. I know. It is true. <laughs> Trump. Trump has put us in a question, in, in an existential moment mm -hmm. that we're, that it's going to be very difficult to get out of, and that that is the point. So I I, 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 I do question the motives of why Donald Trump has done this. It's going to have more to do with a big Israeli donor 
uh, and to and to something uh, something to do with Trump hotel chain is my guess that it will have anything to do with trying to actually make the world a better place. However, I as much as I. Goodness me, I'm not, I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. I wouldn't have voted for him. I'm amazed that people did vote for him. Horrified that he's still in the, in the Oval Office. I would absolutely love for him to be impeached. He should be got long gone. But I do think there is an argument. As much as I realise the Middle East experts are saying this is going to cause chaos and there will be conflagrations over the Middle East of this, um, that it is, it is de facto. It is the, it is the capital of Israel. Um, no other country is going to tell me what capital of my country is. We can't. We wouldn't allow the rest of the world to say, "Oh no, London's not the capital." There's someone, someone, someone disputes that. Jerusalem, the, the, I mean, the, the west half of Jerusalem, or three quarters effectively, has had a majority Jewish population for centuries. It's a Jewish city. Um, obviously, there are issues over East Jerusalem, and obviously, Six Day War. You go back to 1967. Everything in the Middle East means you go back a few decades. Um, but the, 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 the fact of the case is, it is the capital of the country. It has been for 22 years. It has been official American foreign policy, it was voted by Congress, that it is the the, uh, the capital. And, it's, and and other other presidents have actually said they would move the embassy. Uh, even President Obama, when he was a senator, referred to it as the capital of the country. So um, it is actually just to be recognising a truth. I don't. Re I, I think it's symbolic. I don't think it practically changed anything. But symbolism is all that matters in the Middle East, as we know in the, in the peace process. A, I don't think there is a peace process. B, I don't think the other half of, of the of bargain want to come in on, on the peace process. There's no, there's no, they're, they're, they're refusing to come to the table. For but, but if it was just symbolic, um, there's nothing and, and, and if it was not a problem because it is de facto the capital, mm. or whatever the arguments that President Trump might use on this, why is it such a major plank of because, negotiation because to discuss the future Palestine of Jerusalem? Palestine has been, this whole thing right. has been used as an excuse by Middle Eastern countries, largely totalitarian. Why is it an excuse? That's a battle against the only democratic country in the Middle East because they because they hate Israel. But don't, democracy no, is no, no, Let's just get back to the basics. But they don't think Israel should exist. They don't think the Jewish people should be there. But that doesn't and, mean yeah, that that's Palestinians where, that's where they come from. But, but well, whoever they, they are, I mean, this is a very complex argument. Yeah. I don't agree with the last part of what Julie says at all. But the, the, yeah, most, the most important thing is that we have entered a co-agreement since 1948. This has always stood. Uh, we've come together to decide this situation. It's held a very volatile situation. The President of the United States de facto decides to anoint Israel, and the term is the eternal capital of Israel. This goes off beyond the political realm into something else that he has no jurisdiction over. So I He's think... He's a bit evangelical. Well, uh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. I think, what I, I think really the, I think the repercussions are, are going to be significant. Oh, However, a new I, chapter in centuries of religious unrest. Yeah. Already the Palestinians of all factions yeah. are declaring a day of national strike tomorrow. Rally well, they'll be burning flags. You know, but, 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 but I, think, no question. I think the bottom line is that the United States under Donald Trump is walking, stepping out of a whole conversation among the nations of the world, whether it's good or bad or effective. To be fair, as he said he would do. Well, well... And, and which haven't been worked. Well, you know, three million, you know what, that's a, that's a long <laughs> other discussion. But the fact is, is the question is, he's done this, and if the consequences are going to be suffered by not just the United States, but everyone else, and he yeah. doesn't care. Okay. I, I, yes, I agree with you on that, absolutely. Uh, let's go to the Daily Mail. Um, the new Defence Secretary has said what about British sympathisers? Well, Gavin Williamson, who, who of course took over after Sir Michael Fallon.